Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. love his reaction i reckon uh g'day everybody welcome to another exciting episode i reckon Ange, who's just joined us must be sitting there sweating on this episode like he's a pee within the first millisecond how good is that so there you go greg's joined us as well all the regular um contributors are all back in town we've got four people with us already absolutely fantastic believe it or not it's wednesday night and it is wet and miserable again it must be us if it wasn't celebrities passing away between uh episodes it's now crappy weather so uh hopefully that's an incentive to not go out uh on the town even though there's no curfew but actually to sit here with us we've got a lot to cover off tonight it's a big weekend being nerdy so um uh without further ado i have to introduce my lads lads how are we tonight most excellent dude <laughs> <laughs> totally oh, radical dude. Not full screen mode. All right. So anyway, it's time for our first presentation. This one actually I, I kind of like. I think it's kind of groovy. This is right up Jeffro's alley. And it's all to do with DVDs and Blu-rays. Not the discs, but the stuff the discs uh come inside of, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So uh here we go. I'm just gonna plonk this up here. And uh it's over to you, Jeffro. Yeah, so this is something that I've uh, been a passionate collector of for about 10 to 15 years. And there are so many examples. I had real fun going through and uh, and trying to just pick some of the uh, the ones for this one. So just on this uh, title slide, we have the uh, the Network DVD edition of The, the Prisoner, which is the 1960s Patrick McGowan uh, television series. And the interesting thing with this one was uh, because the... Um, the prisoner everything is labeled very basic that the box the dvd uh the soundtrack everything that comes with it is all basically labeled sort of uh village edition so they're very much keeping faithful to the um, uh the television show the next one is uh, is one of my favorites close encounters on um nope go back uh i said the word next that's why three uh the um the next one there is Close Encounters. And the really good thing about this particular Blu-ray is that it actually lights up. So it's got little LEDs embedded into it. So you get that sort of full um, Close Encounters um, ship effect. And on the uh, the right, another one of my personal favourites, it's actually the Mythbusters um, uh, set, but it's in the shape of a detonator. So... Uh, this is the sort of things I really love. The fact that uh, you know they come up with all this unusual uh, uh, design and packaging and such. So this is what the uh, the talk's all about today. So with the next slide, we have the uh, origins of where this started off, and it began with the um, the videotape era. There weren't that many examples, but the one on the uh, the left there is uh, My Fair Lady. So. What made it a little bit extra special was the fact that it came in a nice presentation box. Uh, it had a um, uh, a making of video cassette, and that was actually really something that they didn't do, or they didn't box with the uh, the regular movie. And uh, something very popular was that they did books. So in this case, it came with the uh, the original novel. In the middle there, we have the uh, Fright Night Two. Uh, videotape and it's shaped as you can see oh, i hope you can see it in the shape of a coffin and that was actually a fairly common thing to do so there were several releases but again the only thing special about it was the the, uh, the boxing there as a coffin and on the right hand hang side on, hang on. Just, so do you think that one of the reasons why they didn't do a lot of these uh fancy video covers for videos is because video stores couldn't store them couldn't display them properly I, I think that's very much a, um, uh, a true example of yes. And the other thing, too, is that the home video market wasn't quite as prevalent as what we sort of have now. So um, you wouldn't see that many releases because they just didn't know whether people were interested in or not or paying the, uh, uh, the extra price point. But uh, the one on the right was probably the most popular uh, videotape release, and that was for Titanic. 
So um, it was really nice. Came in a fantastic box. It had a um, uh, an A4 carded um, film cell that you can uh, display, and it came with uh, a nice little book and um, and is again uh, making of material. So that uh, that was how it all began, sort of uh, in in the good old days of videotapes. So the next one we have is uh, some examples of some of the the DVD releases. Now, heads are very popular. So here are two probably of the uh, the I was going to say the uh, the ones that are very most collected. You've got Predator, and this thing is probably about uh, about a foot and a half tall. And the same thing with the uh, the Sunny Head on the uh, the right hand side. Um, I'm not a big fan of the um, the the movie I Robot, but of course when I saw this uh, released, uh, I said I've got to have it. So. Um, with with examples of like this, uh, when they came out, they're probably about one hundred and thirty to one hundred and fifty dollars. These days, you couldn't pick them up for less than about three hundred. So uh, uh, they're both probably about came out about five six years ago, back when uh, things like uh, DVDs were at the height of their uh, popularity. So the uh, the next one we have is. Um, Two examples are Plan of the Apes. The one on the left is a an American release, and I actually had to get it from uh, Amazon. And fortunately for me, uh, I have an American pen friend who was able to sort of buy it from Amazon and then ship it across. But um, that one is it's a what I call a thing of beauty. The actual um, uniform is all made out of cloth, so that's real cloth, real zips. The actual uh, hair itself is actually uh, real hair, so it is. Um, it's a very nice uh, example of how detailed some of these um, some of these releases can be. The one on the uh, the right hand side, Caesar, that uh, came out in Australia. So that is basically a a large plastic mold, but still the level of detail on these things is uh, incredible. So. Um, Two examples of some really good head. So good on you. So why do you why do you think they produce these things in the first place? Because clearly some franchises, some movies don't get this sort of royal treatment where others do. Is it because they think the film isn't all films aren't going to work, or is it because they're going to work so well that it just boosts the collector's market? What do you think the reason is? I mean, they very much aim it towards a market that they know has a uh, a cult following. So you. You could buy the uh, the Plan of the Apes collection, but if you're a fan and you see this, you've got to buy it again. And um, I mean, they know that there is a, a, a mark of people that want display items, and these are fantastic display items. If uh, um, if you can get people to pay the extra money, then they they will. And uh, as I said, they just they just really look fantastic. Speaking of money, though, you can't. People won't be able to see this, but that says one hundred and sixty-eight bucks up there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's how much the person that uh, bought it at JB Hi-Fi actually paid. I uh, managed to get it for a little bit cheaper off of eBay, so they had it up for auction, and I I think it was about eighty dollars that I got it for. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they they can be they can be expensive. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. The, the the level of detail for for the chimpanzee it's pretty full on. So yeah, oh, it's, it's, you know how they got that level of detail for the chimpanzee? What? They they just had Daniel sit for them and uh, sculpted it from there. <laughs> Good on you. All right, we move on. The uh, the one on the left is a uh, an American uh, release for uh, Dexter, and the. When I uh, got this, uh, it was probably about um, about two hundred dollars or something like that. But it was on one of those Amazon sales. Originally, it was about three hundred and fifty dollars, and it's freaking huge. So we are talking about something that stands almost uh, uh, about nine hundred um, millimeters high. So it, it is big, uh, large, and in charge, as they say. So uh, uh, I wasn't afraid to uh, to buy that, but. Uh, that one is, um, yeah, it's, it's from the television show Dexter, and uh, I guess it's a head. I don't know what to say. 
Hang on, wasn't Dexter from uh, Perfect Match? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, if you got, if your mind can um, cast back to the days of Greg Evans and uh, Perfect Match, uh, like, yeah, yeah. And it's like peaches and cream, or it's like nerds and DVDs. You could argue. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's compatibility for Jeffro is ninety eight point six percent. Yes, never tell me the odds. Very good. All right. And the uh, the one on the uh, the right is from a um, uh, a TV series. So. I'm not afraid to buy something if I've not actually seen the uh, the television series of the movie. If if the actual um, DVD and the contents look really good, and and this one actually uh, is quite nice, and it, it you can pick it up off of eBay for about forty to fifty dollars, so it's still quite reasonable. So uh, yeah, I've I've never seen the Strain, probably never will, but I've got it in the collection. Next along line, we have. Uh, a set that came out back in the early days of uh, DVDs, and this is actually for the uh, the Matrix. So you get this wonderful uh, bust of uh, Neo, and uh, alongside it, it comes with all the DVDs in uh, clear uh, Perspex slide-out shelves. So uh, I've never seen anything like that before, and uh, that one... Uh, you can still pick up for a reasonable price, even though it came out in something like 2012. Uh, so about $70, $80, and you, you get this really fantastic uh, uh, model and um, and all the Matrix movies and with all the extras. So the, uh, the one on the right is, of course, from uh, Futurama. This one looks really, really good. It's um, It stands about... Uh, about 15, 16 inches high, and uh, I've seen people just sell it without the DVDs uh, just because it's such a fantastic um, prop, and it just looks really good. So uh, uh, if you're a Futurama fan, that's absolutely a, a must-buy, I would have thought. Very good. Uh, Jeff, can you do me a small favour? Can you just move your microphone away from you a little bit, just distorting just a little bit? Thanks, man. Just ah, fair enough. Cool. All right. Okay, so... Uh, the final example of uh, heads is uh, probably one of the most uh, sought after examples, and it's the uh, alien head. So in here, you get to see what it looks like. But on the right, you can actually see how the uh, the discs are stored. So uh, not that I've ever broken mine out, but uh, that's actually sort of uh, shows that these busts can be sometimes very much used for, you know, the practical purpose. Remember, you're not supposed to say it's a DVD holder. You're supposed to say it's a Xeno what? <laughs> yeah. I think it also doubles as a, as a dipping plate. You can just put some dip in there, some hummus, and just dip it around if you really get bored. Yeah. Actually, yeah, what nah, you need is to be able keep, to keep it mint. You need to push a button. When you want to say, oh, I want this disc, say, over here, you push the button and it comes out with a second set of jaws. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. I'd buy that too. Okay, next one we have is um, I like a good bust. So the uh, the one on the left is an Australian-only release, and I was a little bit surprised to find that out. And they're actually resin busts of all five uh, the Thunderbirds brothers. And um, if you're getting that sent out in the post, it does weigh a fair bit. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, it was one of those things where I bought one at the time and I thought, this is really great uh, and had deep regrets that I didn't buy a second one. And years and years later, one came up on eBay. I said, thank you very much. Make sure you pack it with uh, some TLC. And fortunately, they did because I'd be shattered if it was shattered uh, in transit. So um, that's that's one of those few ones where I've actually got two of the uh, of the collector set. Mine and has the on the side for whatever yeah. reason and that's how i got it and that was from jb at discount yeah if you can get them at discount i mean it's worth worth you know if there's a little bit of damage that you can accept because it just makes it more affordable the the, mon uh, the monsters yeah. do sorry uh the the three guys on the right they do look pretty good the bella lugosi one in particular is very cool. they really are and um they Again, they were one of those ones that came out in the, the early days where DVDs were at their peak and at their height. And uh, as soon as I saw them, I said, yeah, thank you very much because, yeah, they are fantastic. They they are really good and, and sort of hard to get now. So uh, I'm glad I did get them when I did. 
Very good. Now, um, on the left-hand side, we have a DVD release for Battlestar Galactica. And essentially what it is, it's a, um, a lid that's got the Cylon helmet sort of molded into it. So um, it, it just, yeah, it looks really good. I've never actually seen anything uh, similar to this. Uh, the interesting thing is up on the top right-hand corner, uh, they actually had to put on the, uh, the classification. So uh, they actually had to put like a little sticker because obviously when they released, they said, hang on, we don't know what what rating the movie is. So that, yeah, that's right. They had to put that there. On the uh, on the right-hand side, of course, uh, Transformers. There's been a, a lot of different uh, collectible sets for Transformers. And this one comes in a really nice um, box, but uh, be careful. Otherwise it just tips over if you're not careful. So it's more than meets the eye. And is that right? Yeah, oh yeah, very much. So the next one we have is um, this is this is what I would call a steel book, and I won't go into steel books because they're a thing unto themselves. But uh, it's lovely shape of the um, of the uh, the casing there. So it's got the round top, and also the um, uh, the monocular eyewear is actually sort of raised. So it it it's, gives it a very nice um, 3D effect. So. Um, that one, as you could probably tell from the um, classifications, that's a UK release. So uh, fortunately with eBay, there's a lot of people that um, uh, sell from the UK that do uh, uh, free ch shipping and such. So I got that for a pretty good price. The one on the right is, um, it's actually a round shape of Mars as a tin. And then what you see underneath that, that's just um, uh, cardboard sort of packaging that holds it. But uh, yeah, that's just, and that's one that you can really pick up for about 15 to $20 still, even though it's years old. So that's, um, that's a really nice shaped uh, tin for Total Recall. What you need to do is set up a TV and a DVD player in your dunny. And when you take this disc with you, people say, what are you doing? It's like, I'm getting my ass to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's um, soft. Um, exactly. So the next one we have is a Home Alone paint tin. So um, as you can see, it comes with um, battle plans and, and all sorts of other different goodies. But it just tickled me that the fact that someone thought, well, let's put that in a, um, a paint tin. So I haven't got that one, but that's on my, uh, my want list. And on the, uh, the right-hand side, this one I absolutely love. It's for the movie The Big Lebowski. And uh, as you can see, it's a bowling ball. And inside, when you open it up, uh, there's the uh, the disc. So that style has been used a few times. There's one for uh, documentaries that's shaped as an earth. But, yeah, I just find that a really cool sort of um, display piece. Actually, what I find interesting, and this has sort of come up a few times, like in the Home Alone one, it says the 25th anniversary oh, thing, right? Yeah. So you buy this because it's the 25th anniversary. In five years' time, you've got the 30th anniversary. It's exactly the same tin, except there's a 30 instead of a 25, and then 35, and then 40, and they could just keep marketing these, these things forever if they really wanted to. So uh, there you go. They, abs they absolutely do. I've had to buy the 45th anniversary Blues Brothers one just because of the fact that, you know, it comes as a uh, collector piece. But just see, when you thought you're done. See, the thing is, in five years' time, when they produced the 50th anniversary one, you'd have to think that's the one to eat because, you know, like 50 is the big, big shamu. So, uh, yeah, don't be surprised if you're uh, twisting, uh, shaking your tail feather again in a few years' time. So the next one we have is um, the uh, Alien. And this one is a beautiful sculpt. I mean, the level of detail. And... Um, if I could be wrong, so don't hold it uh, against me, but I think it actually does light up at the top. But that's um, uh, made by Sideshow Collectibles. So in themselves, you know, very uh, reputable brand that um, people do know, uh, but they do these uh, releases for uh, DVD. And on the, uh, I have, yeah, yeah. It, the egg. and you'll know how, how beautiful it, uh, it, it looks. So does, and, does the lips open up when you want to get a disc out of it? <laughs> Move on. That, that, that'll, that'll be on the uh, 50th anniversary edition, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. And on the, uh, the right-hand side for the television show uh, Breaking Bad, you've got the, um, 
uh, the drum, which opens up and all your discs are stored in there. And you've also got things like the uh, the cooking apron. So uh, this is another one on my, um, my wish list. But uh, uh, yeah, that's um, another package design. So uh, here we have uh, a Top Gun leather jacket. Now, there was about four or five different versions of these. So there was um, uh, the jacket from An Officer and Gentleman. They had a jacket from uh, the movie Grease, all designed in this little miniature um, uh, jacket where inside you'd find the actual um, uh, DVD. So just very clever and also clever packaging and um mps knows all about this one because he's got one of these uh is the uh the shoe phone there you go oh well done very good oh, okay. well, max <laughs> now um it's it's one of those ones if you think oh that's really good you should be able to pick it up for less than 25 dollars on ebay it it hasn't really skyrocketed in price but you know just a, a little fantastic um uh, uh, clever, very clever um, uh, marketing ploy for uh, for DVDs. And I bought it because I love the idea that it was a shoe. Simple as that. Yeah, I mean that's that. It's, it's a big shoe. It's bigger than my foot, so it's got to be like a size fifteen or something because this thing's massive. Yeah, it's got it. I guess it had to fit the DVD, so that's why it had to be so big. And uh, one size does fit all. So there you go. Oops. Okay, so we'll move on to the uh, the the uh, the next ones, which are DVDs that are released in a a book format. So uh, on the left we have uh, the complete series from the television show Grimm, and um, as you can see from the picture there, uh, all the um, all the actual uh, pages, uh, something that holds the uh, the discs but they also relate to the actual show itself in so much as that Grimm is all about hunting down these, uh, these creatures. So in the book, you get to see like in, in the television show, all his notes about the, uh, the creatures and such. So just brilliant, brilliant sort of concept for, uh, for marketing. And on the, uh, the right hand side, uh, that is the, uh, the book shadows from charmed. So again, uh, you get to see what would have been in the actual, um, television show uh, book itself and these and the actual pages hold the uh, the, the discs so um, just beautiful presentation and uh, yeah, they're, they're great ones to own the um, covered in blood so there's been a few of these ones and what they do is essentially is they have a, um, a red dye material that is then held inside a um, uh, an additional cover over the top so you get these wonderful sort of blood effects so two examples of this uh, uh dexter and uh the strain movie daybreakers so um i haven't seen any other ones other than these two but uh yeah just another different way of um selling a product uh something different from uh, from the usual um uh packaging i've actually seen um a, you know the scream mask from the movie Right, mm -hmm. and then normally you just get the mask with the bit coming down, and you got the the hood over the top. But I knew a dude who had a version where it had an outer layer of clear plastic, and you press the thing, and all its blood ran over the top of it. Right, it was all contained within itself. But it was just something different because you didn't expect it because it looked like a normal mask that you would normally wear, the normal screen mask. And they pressed the and, and like it was just a suction thing, right? And it was yeah. a tube over the top, and all this blood would just pour over. And it was like friggin' out, that's <laughs> something different. So that is uh, very clever. Yeah, indeed. Now, uh, there is um, uh, several uh, different uh, DVD releases that are released in um, uh, these very nice hard cases. So yeah, the one we're any, having... Sorry, Jeffro, before you go any further, you got a question. Uh, do you own them all, the ones that you're showing? Most of them, most of them. There are some that uh, I've had to uh, source, but uh, I do so. That picture on the right is actually my carpet. So, um, but this is this is for the, uh, the the show Alias. Now, I've never actually seen the show, but essentially it comes in a very decorative box, and then its lid and everything else is held up by magnets. So, when you take the uh, 
the lid off it pops open and as you see there it contains all the uh the dvds and there's uh one for hellraiser that's very much a similar sort of uh type of uh situation in in terms of the box so uh, some other examples we've got on the next uh slide uh the shagadelic brady bunch um complete series this is one that's been on my uh, my want list for a while haven't actually um had a chance to get it because it's it's around about the 130 140 dollar mark but you know it's a real shag that you got there the one on the the right is one i do have and it's for the television uh show six feet under and very clever because you've got the the, the little bit of grass on the uh, top you've got the plaque and then the side the box is representing six feet of dirt so uh, very very clever whoever thought of that one well you know what i thought I mean, I wasn't really paying attention. When the six feet under one came up, the first thing I thought is, why has he got a box out of Burke's backyard? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, and that's, a, that's a real sort of uh, short sort of uh, uh, fur on the top. So, you know, really lovely to sort of touch. Very cool. Next one we have is uh, one of the examples from um, the Star Trek series. So um, they did these ones way back in the early days through uh, Easy DVD, if anyone remembers um, them. I think it was Easy DVD. And um, this one's, of course, a ball cube. On the uh, the right-hand side, this is an American release, and it's for the phase one of the um, of the Marvel movies. And it's actually the... Uh, I was, I'm going to mispronounce the thing. I think it's Tesseract case. So... Um, when you um, uh, look at the top of that one, it's got a, a, a light that actually lights up. And when you open it up, it's it, you can see all the circuitry and the, the, the gadgets and all that. And uh, on either side, you've got uh, the movies in um, in sort of slipcover cases. But it's such a beautiful presentation to uh, to be able to have. So that one's that one I was lucky enough to get relatively cheap but i have seen it uh, on ebay for about 300 dollars, which i refuse to pay but uh, um it's it's very it's a very nice as they say <laughs> okay next one we have is uh the star trek collection now if uh, people have actually owned this one then um, you can start bitching now because those cases were really hard to open up and sort of put back without actually damaging the contents inside so uh, they're very hard sort of uh, shells where you lift the, uh, the lid off the top and then sort of uh, try and put it back on again. So, um, but uh, yeah, they were the early editions of um, of Star Trek that we got. You can almost argue too, like as you mentioned with the next generation stuff, uh, fans really got jibbed big time in terms of how much these things were being, um, like how much they cost for people to buy. And... In time, of course, all the prices plummeted when people realised, oh, hang on, who's going to fork out this much money? But other TV shows uh, were a hell of a lot cheaper, even though the packaging might not have been as fancy. But, yeah, I, I certainly think that Star Trek fans kind of got ripped uh, quite badly for quite a while. So, yeah. So the next one we have is um, figures. Go figure. This is very popular amongst the, uh, the, the DC uh, cartoons and such. So uh, as you can see here, uh, Justice League um, and, uh, and Batman. So it's just one of those little sort of three and three quarter action uh, figures that, uh, that you get. And um, yeah, I don't know, I guess if you're a bit of a fan, they're, they're great, but I, I don't have a complete um, extensive range of these things, but they're, they're cute. Okay, so some other examples we have, uh, the, uh, the Lego movie. In terms of marketing, well, what else could you expect but a little uh, Lego figure? So um, that one, as you can see, um, see the price, it's from JB Hi-Fi for twenty-four ninety-nine, but I didn't pay that much. So uh, uh, the one on the right-hand side is where we start to see pop vinyls um, coming out in relation to uh, DVDs and Blu-rays as well. So you get a, like a little miniature... Um, uh, pop vinyl that's exclusive to the Blu-ray. So here we have one for uh, for Aquaman. 
So other examples we have are the soft toy variety. So this one is a, an American one for uh, Smurfs as they came out. And Smurfs did a lot of soft toy ones. This is just one. And uh, on the right hand side, the Lorax. Um, not probably the greatest uh, soft toy, but it is what it is. So again, that's an American one. So quite cute. Um, the Lorax dude, he looked at the back of him or the front of him? Looks like the back. I, I, yeah, that's it. I think you're looking at oh. the, uh, the, the, the side. I think it's a side version because I think you can see, see his feet going that way. So they, yeah, they could have been. That's his nose and that's his eyes and he's there. So because originally I thought it was his backside. And I go, why is it the back of him? But, you know, I figured it out in the end. Yeah, all good. Maybe, maybe someone's just twisted his head right around and it is half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, this is uh, essentially the wow factor. So the one on the left is the uh, Negatory Plaza from uh, Die Hard, which is pretty obvious. I got this one when Amazon, back in the early um, 2010, 2011 and all that, used to have these sort of lightning deals. And this is one of these ones where it came up and I said, thank you very much. And uh, they shipped it over. And um, yeah, it's it's a it's a real beauty to behold. Fantastic Please tell detail. Please at Christmas time. <laughs> I'd love to say that, but I can't. Sorry. <laughs> now I have a DVD box set. Ho ho ho! <laughs> these 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 ones don't come up often. Uh, it was on uh, eBay fairly recently, and it went for about two hundred bucks. So, uh, but um, I said I was just lucky enough to get it in one of those uh, flash deals back in the early days. The, uh, the Labyrinth one's quite interesting because it comes in essentially like a triangle-shaped box and inside it's got, um, I don't know, I guess you could sort of say the Labyrinth inside. It's like sort of a series of stairs or whatever it is. So try and take a picture. It was impossible. So uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. And the, uh, the one on the right uh, is one that everybody loves. It's the Rambo Grenade. So... Um, it is one of those things where if you can pick that up for less than 200 feel yourself blessed because this one this is one of those crazy ones that seems to have everybody's interest so if it comes up on ebay uh it just the the prices go through the roof so i'm lucky enough to sort of uh have bought one at a price that i thought was acceptable but yeah they don't come up too often and they go like hotcakes so what will happen with the Rambo one, right, is you're holding it and it's really, really heavy and you accidentally drop it on your foot and you break a toe and there's blood pissing everywhere. You go, he drew first blood. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually a fairly uh, decent old size. It probably stands about, uh, about 10 inches tall. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's a so, so freaking, it might go, freaking big one. So it goes big, butter, bing, butter, boom. Uh, sorry, Jeffro, question for you. Is it first blood? I think he's being serious. Um. I would say that probably it's the, the first movie, only because if it was First Blood, I think they would have marked it as, as such on the uh, the front. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I would say because it says Rambo and doesn't say First Blood, it's it's the original movie. Here's a question for you. Did your missus think the price was reasonable? I don't I think guess, you had, do you? I, I guess, um, you know, I get my, my spending allowance and I can spend it on what I want. So I'm I'm the one that actually sometimes has to sort of go, oh, I really wanted that, but I didn't have the money. So I guess anything I buy must be fairly reasonable if I'm, uh, if I'm paying out for it in the end. Very good. Okay, these, these are really grouse, as you would say. <laughs> uh, these are for Seinfeld. And um, as you can see here on the left, you actually get a, um, a salt and pepper shaker. You get cards. You get a script. Uh, so this was, for, I think, for season three of uh, Seinfeld. And uh, on the uh, the opposite side, season five and six, you actually get a, a little miniature replica puffy shirt. I mean, I can't even imagine sort of who the brains was that thought of these ideas to be able to release them as a, um, as a DVD, but, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, fantastic, weird, interesting, um, concepts to, to release salt and pepper shakers and, uh, puffy shirts. 
Now, the uh, the one on the left is effectively the the Holy Grail. This is actually a Japanese uh, release. Uh, you, I've never seen one. Um, I'd hate to think how much people would want for one, uh, but they're actually uh, um, uh, so, so essentially it's the Nebuchadnezzar from, um, from the Matrix. <laughs> I was waiting for you to try and pronounce it. You back and Tommy Plaza wrong, and I thought he's never going to be able to pronounce the Nebuchadnezzar. So what is it, Jeffro? It's a uh, very nice model. <laughs> and uh, the the one that didn't quite come out so well on the uh, the right hand side that was actually from the movie Watchmen. So it's actually one of the, it's called the Owl Ship, and um, exclusive to Amazon. And uh, uh, it's one of my ones on the uh, uh, the watch list, but hardly ever comes up. Pro probably as much as the uh, the Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's one for you. Imagine this, right? So you got the Nebuch Nebuchadnezzar. We'll get the pronunciation right. Imagine if these bits here were the DVDs. How big would the model be? Do you reckon that'd be my goal of it? If a yeah, huge, it'd, it'd be a, a trucking big um, model. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, I love it. Moving right along, this is um, uh, one that I actually found out of cash converters. I couldn't believe it. Uh, uh, but it's the, uh, the Sound of Music, and that is actually a uh, porcelain uh, tea and saucer set that came with it. So um, that one I was really pleased about. And on the right-hand side, that's actually a, um, a music box. And when I bought it off of eBay, they said um, it, it doesn't work and all that kind of stuff. So uh, when I got it, I um, was able to sort of take off part of the, uh, the box set find the little um, uh, watch battery that was in there, replace it, and when you open it up, you get to hear, the hills are alive with the sound of music. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just such a cute piece. That one's about, I'd say, about uh, 14 inches long by about um, 11 inches uh, across. And when you open it up, as I said, you get get the music, and uh, it's a really nice, solid um, solid box. Very good. So the next one we have, uh, got a nice close-up shot for this one. This is for uh, the uh, the Tom Hanks movie, uh, The Da Vinci Code, and you actually get the cipher. And these these came out um, in Australia and quite reasonably priced for about um, about thirty or forty dollars. And at the time, I said, "Oh, I can't afford it. Uh, I wasn't working." And uh, took me years and years and years to sort of eventually have one come up on uh, eBay. So, um, and what made matters worse is it had a uh, a sticker on it that said uh, three for forty dollars. I'm thinking, Ugh, if only that had that kind of sale where when I needed it. But uh, it's beautiful replica of the uh, the cipher. On the um, the right hand side uh, is the actual spaceship from ET. Now that's actually huge. That stands about. Uh, about 14 or, 14 or 15 inches high, and it's got a button on it. And when you press the button, you suddenly get the ET theme. Uh, all the lights pop up, and the uh, the little um, uh, ladder that sort of allows the uh, the ship to open up actually drops down. So it's fantastic. So that's that's one that I actually bought two for. So one I could keep in the box, and one to play with. So uh, that's. That's a really clever uh, little piece of marketing for uh, for ET, and, and and a very impressive price tag of one hundred and forty seven bucks up the top there. So, uh, anyway. yeah, yeah, it um, it's one of those ones where you can if you can wait for the uh, the JB twenty percent off sale, sweet. Uh, speaking of uh, JB, the one on the left, Police Academy, it comes with a, uh, a flashing light. So uh, I bought this. Um, about eight years ago and uh as soon as i brought it home my son said oh can i have that light because he was big into police cars and all that kind of stuff i said no nah, it's a collectible son um you can get your own so but i just love the fact that you know they uh, they marketed it with a police light the uh the one in the middle uh it is actually a uh, rotating saw so uh you press a button and the thing spins around so uh, I know it's incredible. 
and the, on the uh, the right hand side, it's actually a um, uh, a cricket ball that's uh, surrounded by uh, fake turf. I mean, uh, who thinks of these marketing ideas? I mean, they they're fantastic, but no, you know, they're, who, they're who, marvelous. Who, <laughs> they're yeah, that's marvelous, it, Jeff, they're marvelous. Well, it's obviously Thank worked you. if you went and bought these things. So, uh, yeah, there you go, dude. I like it. Very good. Now, the um, the last one we have here is the uh, the the lost uh, set. And when you open it up, it actually has a um, a game that was related to one of the episodes. And I was reading up about it, and I was reading about the fact that it has a map of the um, the hatch underneath the uh, the box and for years and years i've had this thing and i never realized it actually hidden a map underneath the uh, the box so it's like when you bought those board games and you had to lift up the whole thing and the instructions were underneath well it actually has secret things uh hidden in the actual set itself including that map and also uh, apparently on some of the the dvd cases there's also secret clues to other things that um uh, to do with lost but um yeah that uh that wraps up my uh talk so uh i hope you enjoyed it well done round of applause for jeffro absolutely fantastic what it, this tells you is a couple of different things actually one is you need a crap load of space in your house to house all these things remember the disc is only like this flat thing it's the crap that goes around it that takes up all the space uh and so of course true. With the advent of streaming services and the way the world is turning, there's a good cut. There will come a time where these things may just never exist ever again once hard uh, media uh, stops being produced. So, as an example, the new series, The Mandalorian, right? You can imagine, oh, they'll produce a DVD box set with a Mandalorian helmet and everybody will buy it. Who knows? They probably won't produce a DVD box set at all because they don't need to. It's all on a streaming service. So, uh, these things are definitely um, got a limited. Um, um shelf life for the future that's it for is, sure so, uh, it is true there's not that many that are being released um in the last few years so uh very much they had their heyday you're right very good now there's a few questions here do you have separate copies of these oh, i like this one do you have these separate copies of these movies to watch or do you just have them in the boxes so i think that's what you asked Se uh, se separate copies very good okay uh yeah right Ange mash yeah, i think uh, jeff has got mash but i don't think you got the photograph of it have you no, I do, actually I don't have the, uh, the the medical kit one. So because uh, Lavina bought the uh, the box sets, uh, I didn't really feel like I wanted to double up on that one. Yeah, fair enough. Very good stuff. But uh, yes, how about that? So marketing opportunities. I mean, clearly it does work. They produce these things, and people do buy them. It'd be a limited number, you'd think, but uh, uh, for what they are, um, it just goes to show. That, oh, those messages are plow through. Dad's army came in an ammunition box. Oh, how good's that? Yeah, <laughs> so there yeah, you go. Yeah. yeah, and of course you do wonder who buys these box sets and then who actually watches the shows. Probably not what, uh, not at all. I mean, Jeffro's bought them purely because they're novelty items in a lot of cases, which is very, very cool. Good stuff. Well done. Um, anyway, we're going to wrap up our show. Anything you lads want to finish uh, say before we sign off? I, I think we need a. Uh, I think we need an artificial intelligence uh, to run for the next presidential election. That's all I can say. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think that'll help me that. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, I was thinking that you're going to say you need an artificial intelligence to run this show. I wouldn't argue with that. So uh, there you go. I uh, 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 loving these chats. Yeah. Well, we're just chewing the fat and just do oh, Here we go. I mean, Walking Dead, I'll tune in for that one. So there you go. Um, very good. I'll try and get rid of that. All right. So we'll see you next week. Thought ready for some zombie talking, and uh, it should be a bit of fun. So in the interim, make sure you're all <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye.